episode number 20, five ways to win in 2023 with Ryan Frank. Here we go, tribe. This is the Kidman Tribe Podcast. We're helping you as children's pastors, volunteers, and leaders plan, create, and execute incredible life-changing kids' worship experiences at your church. With practical tips, coaching, training, and resources from the best in kids' ministry around the world. It's time to join the tribe. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Kidman Tribe Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Noble. We are starting out a brand new year. It's 2023. God has incredible plans for you, for your ministry, for your family. I'm so thankful that his word says that his mercies are new every morning, which means as you turn the page and you walk into 2023, don't look back, only look forward. We have to make sure as leaders that our front windshield is much bigger than our rear view mirror. What happened in the past does not dictate what's going to happen in the future. God has incredible uh, things ahead for you in 2023. And I want to encourage you to have hope, to have peace, to look forward with anticipation to what God is going to do in your ministry with your families, with your kids, uh, even relationship with your pastor. Um, I believe we're turning a corner and it's going to be an incredible year. I'm excited to welcome one of the most encouraging guests that I know who will help me kick off 20, 2023 right. I'm excited to welcome my good friend, Ryan Frank, to the Kidman Tribe podcast. He has his own podcast. He also heads up Kids Matter and is such a great friend to kids ministry leaders. He's going to share five ways to win in 2023. You're not going to want to miss it. Ryan Frank is a pastor, a publisher, and an entrepreneur. He also is such an encourager. You're going to love what he has to say, I promise you. He serves as the CEO of Frank Insurance Management. He's also the CEO and publisher of Kids Matter. Ryan is a partner in a real estate firm that offers multi-family housing complexes in multiple cities in the Midwest. The Franks recently opened Lucy's Car Wash and drive through the perfect place to get your car washed and enjoy gourmet soda at the same time. What I love about Ryan is he's got a great head for kids ministry, but he's also an entrepreneur. He's also outside of our circles, really doing some incredible things. So buckle your seatbelts. This is going to be a good one. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll jump in with Ryan right after this. Hey guys, Carl here. With our kids media, we are trying to make it super easy to search our library. One way you can search is by Bible character. Once you're in our library, just click categories from our navigation bar, then choose Bible character, and you'll see a listing of all the biblical characters that we have made kids media content for, and there is a ton on the way as well. You can jump right to games, mini movies, graphics, and more all related to that character. We are dedicated to helping you teach God's word to your kids. We're hoping this easy search capability will help you save time as you find content that will enhance your lesson content with the kids in your ministry. We're behind you. We're cheering you on. You've got this. Hey, welcome to the Kidman Tribe Podcast. My name is Jason Noble. I'm your host, and I'm one of my favorite guys uh, in the world today on the podcast to kick off 2023. Ryan Frank, welcome to the podcast. You're kind. I'm I'm flying in some high clouds with Jason Noble. I feel the same way about you. Uh, Love you. Super thankful for your friendship and everybody on the Kidman Tribe podcast team. You are awesome. You're doing a great job thank you. serving this community. And I'm glad to be here. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, man. And man, you guys are tearing it up with Kids Matter and Megacon. Give it a little like snapshot of how Megacon went this past year. And you know what? We were so humbled and grateful. You know, those are the two words that I keep keep using, humbled that so many people showed up humbled that God's that the Holy Spirit's presence was there and that so many people were encouraged and trained and just grateful uh, because we know it's nothing about us um, but or our team but it was a great event Jason that's great um, you know we're able to partner with the 1230 team they really helped make it amazing we had a record turnout and we we're the conference keeps growing every year so we're moving locations. We're still in the Nashville area, but we found the church that's even a little bit bigger that can give us more options. And 
Uh, we can't we can't wait to see y'all there. The Kids Matter Conference. This yeah, September. give a little snippet. Like, yeah, give us the details on it and let us know. Because yeah. I know like churches are doing their budgets now. Like, you're, talk to us a little bit about yeah, it. Yeah, you're so kind. Thank you. So it's happening September 12th, 13th, and 14th, 2023. All of the information can be found at the Kids Matter Conference. You have to put a Z in Kids Matter, the Kids Matter Conference.com. It's a three-day event filled with main stage sessions, which include great worship, and of course, keynotes and the kind of stuff that you would expect in a main stage kind of general session. And we have a bunch of breakouts. We have over 90 ministry partners that are there um, showcasing the resources that they have to serve you and your church. And we do some fun things along the way. We have a big parking lot party the night before the event starts. Every year, we give away a car. That is Um, cool. It is cool. It's so much fun. And it's just great. You know, we've got this great community that we connect throughout the year on, on Facebook and social media, and then to be able to gather face to face and give each other a hug and a high five. And it's a super, super neat experience. If you've never been there, we'd love for you to come. If finances are a problem, just send me a Facebook message or, or message me on Twitter or Instagram. I'll give you a ticket if finances are in the way. Wow. Uh, we'd love for you to be there just to bless you and encourage you and remind you that what you do matters. And that's really what drives the event and everything we do. And I know a lot of what drives your podcast, Jason, is just reminding people that what you're doing matters. Yes. Don't lose heart. Amen. Amen. And I would say this. I mean, I think it's one of the premier kids ministry training, equipping, encouraging events really in the nation. And so make note to go like plan on going. I think it will change your life. It'll be a great opportunity. Um, Ryan and their team at Kids Matter does such a great job with the conference. I don't think, and Nashville is a great city to hang out in. If you haven't, you know, it's cheap to fly into. It's great. So, you know, I want to encourage you in that. So put that on your calendar. Definitely. Early this year. It's a little earlier than normal. So make sure. It is a couple weeks earlier. Yeah. And yep. so kind of Thank right you, as you're getting into your fall, you know, so well, I'm excited. One of the things that Ryan really does is it's such an encourager. And we're talking about this is the first podcast of 2023. So we're digging into like what we can look forward to. What are some of the keys to making 2023 a great year? I think we're going to turn a corner in a lot of ways where, you know, we've had a little bit of that COVID hangover, all of this stuff going on. But I think 2023 God has some incredible things in store. So Ryan, like, take it away, man. Give us your secrets. Yeah, well, your I, I don't know if I have any secrets. And first first one on the podcast for the year. So podcast listeners, it can only go up from here. So <laughs> take heart. Uh, it's only going to get better after this week. Um, you know, Paul told, or Paul told the church in Colossians chapter number four to take heed of the ministry that you've been entrusted with yes. so that you can fulfill it. Yep. And, you know, we have been given, we are stewards of these ministries that God has given to us. Whether you're like Jason, who has started a church and is doing an amazing, amazing job, whether you find yourself leading children's ministry at a brand new church plant, or whether you're serving in the same church you've been for 20 some years, yeah. wherever you're at in your ministry journey, God has entrusted you. He has given you a ministry to steward. And we need to take, we need to pay close attention to what Paul said in Colossians 4, 17, to take heed of it yep. so that you can fulfill it. And as we go into this new year, you know, we, we, we got to make sure we're starting right. So what I want to do is I'm going to give you five ways to win Love it. in 2023, five ways to win in 2023. And Jason, I have, a, I have the keen ability just to pontificate at the mouth. So jump in anytime you want, or I'll just keep talking. Well, hey, I'll throw one thing in. I'll throw one thing yes. in kind of before we jump into this. I completely agree with the whole idea of he take, take, take note of where God has put you. And I really sense that when you brought that up, one of the things the Lord dropped on my heart is God has you right where he wants you. God has you right where he needs you. And in that perspective, don't get don't sometimes we wonder like God, are you in this? Are you here? Even when it's hard, sometimes when it's the hardest, God wants you there the most. And that's so, exactly right. You know, hang in there. And I completely agree. Like we have to be great stewards. And so jump in. Yeah. Love, love, yeah. All right. I'm so five you. ways to win. Thank you for sharing that in 2023. Yep. Number one, I want you to sometime today when you're listening to this podcast, I want you to write down 
three big wins from 2022. Oh, that's good. So if you're driving down the road, don't do it right now. Okay. Right. But next time you, you get your phone out, get start a note, write down three big wins. It is so easy to forget. You know, we just get, we ramp right up. We get right, we're through the holidays where Christmas is now behind us. Yep. We're ramped up, we're ready to go into the new year. And it's easy to forget about the victories of this past year. So make sure that you celebrate the wins. Yeah. Make sure that you celebrate the wins. And, and don't beat yourself up. It's some of you, I know it's easy to focus on what you didn't get done in the last year, the goals you didn't have that you wish you would have hit. But you know what? I bet if you look back, you're going to see some wins, oh, some I, spiritual yeah. decisions that were made, some, some kids that showed up, some kids that invited their friends. Um, the fact that God gave you another year to serve these kids and families. I was reading not too long ago, uh, Jason, in the book of in Jude, um, book of Jude, Jude took some time. The reference is, I wrote it down somewhere on my notes. Let me find it. Jude 1, 5 to 7. Awesome. Jude looked back, and in those few verses, he recalled everything that God had done. Mm. And what it did was it gave him energy and a renewed spirit for the future. So, and so as you approach this coming year, don't, don't fail to rejoice in the answered prayers, the victories of 2022. Really? Jason, before we hit record on the podcast, you were sharing some victories in your ministry of 2022. And I'm so glad you, you're pausing and reflecting on those. They give you energy, don't they? They do. And I think what happens is it also builds a heart of gratitude to look back and yes. in those moments where you're like, God, like, how are we going to make it? I mean, we planted in the middle of COVID. And so, yeah. you know, when we were first starting, it was like, okay, God, you know, only you can make this happen. And he has such an incredible track record. And I think sometimes we forget as we're looking at all of the needs and everything that we can look back with a heart of gratitude and a heart of gratitude moves God's hand, I believe. And so as we celebrate the victories, I'd also say, let's couple that with a heart of gratitude to realize like, man, God, in the midst of everything, look at all the good you did. Exactly. All right. Here's number two, write down some ministry goals for this next year. If you haven't done that already, I would literally write them down. Don't just keep them up here in your head. We all have goals, you know, that reside up here in our brain. Yep. Things that we'd like to see but literally write them down. So what are, whether it's, um, you know, some, some tweaks that you want to make to some programs, or you want to do something new this year, or you'd really like to split this department that's, that's grown a little too much into two departments, or you realize I really need a key leader in this area. I've been doing this myself. And uh-huh. I know if I had somebody that could do this for me or with me, it free me up to give me some capacity for more. That's so crazy. write down a few goals um, and and then start. I would literally start to like assign them some res- assign some responsibilities to them or put some put some dates on them. Like, yeah, I would like to do this here. I would like to do this here. I would like to do this by this time. Or or maybe it's I need to recruit somebody to help me do this and somebody to help me recruit this. Take those goals, put them on paper um, and start making some assignments. It'll help them actually get done. All right. Here's number three, Jason. Number three. This is something that I know is close to your heart, Jason, and it's close to mine. And that is as you go into this next year, if you want to have a win, keep your family a priority. Yeah. Yes. Keep your family a priority. Yep. Jason, why is this so hard for so many of us ministry leaders? It's a good but question. It is, isn't it? It is. It is. It is. And I think like um, there was a great book, Andy Stanley wrote it about choosing to cheat. Who yeah. you choose to cheat. Sometimes I think we can we can say, oh, our family is going to understand while we run and we do ministry. And they do understand. But at the same point, like keeping that a priority uh, is so vital. And I think that's the challenge because we know they're going to understand and so we'll take advantage of that and really, you know, really like miss out on yeah. some opportunities. And I think one of the things that goes hand in hand with keeping your family a priority is keeping yourself 
like the self care, a priority, like taking a Sabbath, right? I mean, like that alone, like take a Sabbath every week where you unplug. We've been talking a lot about rhythms in our church. Um, Sabbath has been a big piece. It's the one commandment that we break all the time. You know, we're we're not taking Sabbath and really Mm -hmm. digging in to figure out because I think Sabbath is the reset, right? Like we've got to have rest. We've got to have time for our family priorities. And sometimes we never reset. We're just running so fast and so hard that our families are kind of uh, uh, left alongside the road for better term, you know? No doubt. No doubt. It's funny you brought up that Andy Stanley book because I was just literally yesterday talking to somebody and that we that book came up into our conversation. Right. <laughs> um, it's a great book. You need to look it up on Amazon. I think the title has recently changed. I think they changed the title of it recently, okay. but I don't know the new title. But I, if you Amazon it, you'll find it. Choosing to Cheat. And what he talks about in that book is, you know, we've got all this stuff going on and as ministry leaders or leader of any capacity, whether you work in the ministry or you work in the marketplace or business, we've got work, you know, we've got church, we've got our kids, we've got these extracurricular things. Um, you know, we, we go to the, we want to try to go to the why, you know, we've got all these things that we're doing. And his point um, is that you're never going to get them all done, right? You're okay. never going to be able to get everything done at work and the way you want at church and with your family and with your exercise and you're never going to read everything you want to read. So if you're, you've got, his point is Jason, you've got to choose to cheat somewhere. Right. And he says, if you're going to cheat, cheat over here, 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 but don't cheat your family, right? Right. Keep them a priority. And I hate it. I hate it for ministry leaders because I think sometimes we have this, every leader struggles with work, um, family balance, but, right. but I think as ministry leaders, we can spiritualize it. Like, yeah, well, I'm m- spending more time at work, but at least I'm doing God's work or whatever. Right. I, I think that <laughs> is a colossal mistake right? and a lie of the enemy. You've got to, you're right, Jason, you've got to start by taking care of yourself and yeah. then you've got to keep your family a priority. You can always, always, always Jason, you know this. You can always get another ministry. There is always going to be a always. church, that especially needs in kids a pastor. <laughs> yes, in kids ministry, exactly. If you need a job, call Jason or me. We know yeah. fifty churches right now that are looking for a kids pastor. Totally. But you can't always get another family, and you definitely can't get can't always get back the family God's given you right now. You've got to prioritize it. And one of the greatest ways to show whether or not your family truly is a priority is to just look at your calendar yes. and. It, it really comes down to time. How much time are you allotting them? So if you want to have a great year in 2023, this is my third hint for you or secret. And that is just choose right now that I'm going to make my family a priority. And it may mean that you need to start saying no to some things. You might need to give up golf for a while. Yep. You know, you might need to decide I've been spending a little too much time on this hobby or a little too much time on YouTube or Instagram Whatever you, we each know how we spend our time. Yes. And we've got to choose um, to schedule accordingly. All right, let's go to number four. Fourth way to have a big win in 2023, Kidmen leaders. Be confident in who you are. Yes. Be confident in who you are. Um, I want each one of you listening or watching this right now, I want you to be so uh, self-aware yes. of, you know, this is who I am. This is how God wired me. These are my strengths. These are my weaknesses. I'm, I'm going to refuse to compare myself to other people. That's a challenge for every one of us, myself included. I'm going to refuse to compare my church to someone else's church. I'm going to refuse to compare my giftings to someone else's giftings. So good. Um, I'm, I'm going to be confident in who I am and how God wired me. Jason, one of the number one um, things that I pick up from this community, this Kidman community, because I read everything that you say on the I Love Kidman Facebook group, and, and I, I talk to so many of you, if there's one thing I hear that I, that I hate hearing and I wish that you would change, I hear so many people saying, 
I just don't feel like I've got what it takes. I'm not good enough. Yeah. I don't know that I can do what the pastor wants me to do. And in just this battle of insecurity and yes. this battle, of I don't have what it takes. I'm not capable. I'm not good enough. God has put you exactly where you are. He knows your name. He know, He has He has placed you where you're at. See yourself the way God does. Jason, it'll trip us up if we don't. Oh, and I think that's such a key. I mean, when you're looking at that, maybe on your own, you don't have what it takes. Maybe, on, I mean, most yeah. of us don't. We have to partner with God. And so in that perspective, um, I think that's where we have to just be like, Lord, we need you. And like Ryan, like you said, stop pointing that out that you can't do it because with God, you can do anything. And I honestly believe there's really even no such thing as a failure. There's things that we're going to learn. That's right. You know, we're going to learn through these times where maybe we make some mistakes. We're all going to make mistakes in ministry, you know? I mean, and so with that, I think that in that perspective, I think we have to start speaking because the Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. So you're literally speaking death over your ministry when you're like, I can't do it and I can't make this happen. And, you know, and then you're comparing to others. I think we find our sweet spot when we operate according to who God created us to be. And I think that when you look at areas in your life, that you're feeling a lot of drag and feeling a lot of burnout. Could it be that you're trying to operate outside your gifts and you need to get back to that? And you said it well, there may be things that we have to say no to because everything you say no to, you, you're you able to say yes yeah. to something else, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, one you of know, the things that comes to my mind too in ministry yeah. is like, Ryan, there's only things that you can do in your ministry. Like there's mm-hmm. only things that you can do. Then you staff the team around you that does the rest. I mean, like, You know, in a kids pastor world, like you don't need to be doing kids check in when you need to be ministering to families as they're, you know, doing the nuts and bolts. So there's only things that you can do. And then you have to staff around the team. And I think that will help, too. Oh, I think you're right. We're going to that's actually going to flow into my next point. But before I get there. Yeah. You know, I I was reading in the scripture recently where the, the Bible says that David had to perceive himself to be the king. So there came a point where he had to see God has appointed me. I am the king. And for some of you, you just need to perceive yourself the way God perceives you. Yes. And he has placed you where you are. He, you are not alone. You have the Holy Spirit with residing within you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are redeemed. You have royal blood flowing through your veins. Oh, good. And you are capable with his help of doing exactly what he wants you to do. And don't let the enemy tell you any different. You know, Joyce point. Meyer had it right in that book of hers, The Battlefield of the Mind. Yes. Because so much of it happens up here. It's a mental game. You know, I'm not as good as this person. I don't think I've got what it takes. And I, I know it's not easy. And I'm very, very empathetic to some of you that this is a real, real struggle. Yes. But please, please, please lean in on the Lord. Say in his word. See yourself the God, way God sees you, um, and boy, it'll make a big difference. As you and remember, know. the enemy doesn't want you to succeed in ministry, so he's going to do everything he can to sit on your shoulder and try to convince you that you're not good enough or that God, you know, and I think we just have to kick him off and just say, hey, you know, I'm choosing to listen to God's voice, the truth over, because one of the things about the battlefield of the mind is Joyce talks about the fact that the enemy traffics in lies, so he's sending yes. lies after us all day long, and, you know, if you buy into those lies for a minute, you know, the Bible says to take every thought captive and teach it to obey Christ. So every thought that's that right. in your mind, you know, like it's okay, God, what's the truth? Like I'm teaching this thought to obey you. It's a powerful tool and the enemy does not want you reaching kids. So be, don't be surprised when he tries oh, to get out, right? There is no doubt. You know, Jason, you and I both know it. If yeah. you get serious about kids ministry, not just, not just child care, babysitting, but you get yeah. serious about kids ministry. Hey, it's not all fun and games. We are about very, very important spiritual work. Yes. You're going to have a big target on your back. You are. And yeah, I, I'm convinced of it. And I, I think the number, I think a couple of the biggest tools enemy will use is he'll use what we're talking about right now. Yeah. insecurity, self-doubt. He'll also use discouragement. Yes. Um, and he'll just, he'll get us looking at our pastor. He'll get us looking at, in other words, my pastor let me down, yeah. F- you know, but somebody looked at me the wrong way. My board promised me this and they didn't do it. 
Why did this volunteer quit? This person doesn't like me. The kids aren't really listening. What difference am I making? And we get discouraged and all of a sudden we're exactly where the enemy wants us. And remember, he the enemy doesn't just want to discourage you. John 10 says he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. I mean, he wants to take yeah. us down. This is why, Jason, you're exactly right. You got to daily put on that armor of God. You got to stay in his oh. word. You've got to suit up. I talked yesterday to a mutual friend of ours, Beth Kuchenberger, who is yeah. a great author and part of you know back-to-back ministries. Her new book, or new last year, is Throw the First Punch. And yeah. the point is, you've got to a fascinating book. That's our second book recommendation of the day, Jason. That's it's good. a good one. <laughs> um, Throw the First Punch is all about, hey, if I know the enemy is going to come after me in these areas, yeah. why am I going to sit back and wait? I'm going to take the offensive. I'm going to suit up. I'm going to feed truth to my mind so that I can be in a position of being in the offensive yes. and not the defensive. Yeah, because defense, you're always going to, I mean, you're going to battle defense, no question about it. And I think yeah. one of the things you mentioned that's so important to remember is the enemy tries to work through other people. And the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So yes. don't look at your pastor and think the battle's there. Don't look at the board and think the battle's there. The battle is in the supernatural realm where you're yeah, that's right. Look past the people, you know, look past the kids not listening. Yeah. Like, what is the ultimate goal? And when you look past, I think then you, that's some strategy that you can throw the first punch. Exactly. Well said. Yeah. All right. So let's review these. Uh, number one, write down three things that you are thankful for uh, that were accomplished the past year. So don't forget to celebrate those wins. Uh, number two, spend time writing some ministry goals for 2023. Number three, keep your family a priority. Keep your family a priority. Number four, be confident in who you are. Um, you know, fight insecurity. Refuse to compare yourself with others. Armor up with the full armor of God, Ephesians 6. All right, here's number five. Do what only you can do. There we go. <laughs> do what only you can do. Um, there is an old rule. I don't, I don't know who I heard it or who taught it to me, but I've heard it taught several times. It is the 80-15-5 rule. So 80-15-5, 80% of what you do, anyone else could do. That's good. Okay. 15% of what you do, someone else could do with some training. And then that leaves 5% of what you do are things that only you can do. Now, those numbers might be off a little bit, a but, but the point yeah. is so much of what you do, anyone else in your church could do. That's good. There's a few things that you do, a handful of things that you do that somewhat you could pass off if you trained somebody, spent some time with them. Um, and then that leaves just a small number of things that only you can do. Here's the thing, Kidman leaders, so much of um, satisfaction in life and success in life, so much of, of God giving you more is you have to be in a position where you are ready to receive more and take more. It's a capacity thing. Yep. So if I want to have capacity for more, God, I want you to give me greater responsibilities. Lord, I am praying that this ministry would grow, that we could reach more people. Listen, you've got to make sure you're ready for that. So yes. you need to look at what am I doing? First of all, that someone else could do. That's the 80%. Yep. If you're a Kidman leader um, and you're the one running to Costco every two weeks to buy crackers yep. and you know boxes of, of juice for the kids, Somebody else in your church can do that. I mean, that's not real hard to run to Costco. Exactly. Give them a Costco card and a credit card and let them do that for you. If you are taking two hours a week, I mean, let's just get practical because I know some of yeah. you do this. Right. If, if you are taking two hours a week and you are preparing the boxes for the small group leaders with the copies and the crayons and the scissors, and it's taking you an hour or two, there is somebody in your church that I'm confident that would come in and do that for you so that you don't have to do that. Then there are some things that you do that are going to require a little training. And maybe it's ordering. Maybe it's 
uh, record keeping on your computer. Um, you know, maybe it's some ministry planning that you, you do it, you might enjoy it. Maybe you feel like, you know what, I, I've got this, but, but honestly, if someone else was trained, they could do that, which leaves yes. you, um, as you start delegating and letting people do some of that 80%, some of that 15%, it gives you more time for the 5% that only you can do. And, and depending on your ministry context, that's going to look different. For someone like Jason, who's planted a church, it's going to be the vision for the church. It's going to be preaching. It's going to be leading the leaders in a children's ministry. Like, you know, for like those of your kidmen leaders at a church, it might be thinking through, okay, big picture. Where are our families? Where are the kids spiritually? Where do we want to take them? Kind of getting a pulse on where the kids and families are and what should our vision be this year? What are some big events we want to do? Maybe it's preparing an amazing lesson that you feel like you've been winging it the last couple of months because you've been so busy doing stuff that other people could do. So really take a look at, and I would encourage you, if you really want to have a great 2023, Literally, get out, get a notebook, start a note on your phone, and as it come to mind, start listing literally everything you do. Everything from passing out the the roster sheets on Sundays to checking the label machines on Sunday mornings to make sure they're full, to making sure that the nursery schedule gets distributed, yeah. to everything. Write it all down, and then look at okay, out of this stuff. What's what of this is the eighty percent that really anybody could do? I mean, anybody, anybody can check a label machine to make sure it's stopped. Right. Exactly. What are some things that the fifteen percent can do? Now, not everybody knows how to fix that label machine when it breaks on a Sunday morning, so you might need to train somebody how to do that. That's the fifteen percent, so and good. and then that and then what are those things that only I can do? And here's the thing, you know, I've heard Jim Weidman say it a hundred times that there are that God looks. And he wants to bless ministries and leaders with growth and more. But if he looks down on you, you don't have capacity for more. He might just pass by you and give it to somebody who's ready for more. Totally. So don't, totally. don't be so busy doing things that other people could do that you don't have the capacity and the margin for what's next and to do those things only you can do. Do you agree with me, Jason? As a I do. And you know, I think what's interesting is you have to look at like, okay, why are we feeling like we have to do everything? Could it go back to the last point where if you're not busy, you're feeling insecure or you're, yes. if you're not busy, like maybe trying to control things or trying to like go, okay, like I'm the leader. And you know, it almost gives us satisfaction where you know we're be getting satisfaction in a different area. Um, of just saying, okay, God, like I'm going to stretch and delegating is not an easy thing because that means yeah. you're giving away a portion of what maybe has become your identity. And so yeah. in that perspective, it, you it know might be like going back to number four and saying, okay, God, what is my identity? Redefine who I am so that I can, because the best position you can be in as a leader is giving stuff away. Give your job away. Trust me. Totally. hundred percent. Right? You know, hundred percent. to me, you like, to- oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I just, I'm tagging on to what you're saying. You need to always be working yourself out of a job. Yes. Always work yourself out of a job. And I win when other leaders are winning. Like yeah. that's where that's where I feel like we win. Like when we delegate things. And I've had to balance that because as a doer, most children's leaders are doers. They're doers. We like to have our hands in. We like to be doing, yeah. doing, doing. We feel like something's not going on, depending on how your how your personality makeup is. And I think it's retraining and rethinking to say, no, I I'm not the one that has to do everything. I'm better if I build a team. You're exactly right. And yeah, and to tag up piggyback on that, you're exactly some people want to do it everything because um of what you said. A lot of it it's rooted in insecurity. Yep. And you know, I I need to show my worth in the show that I'm busy by yep. doing A B C D E F G. There are some people that have been burnt in the past. They've yep. tried to get people to help. Somebody's Somebody or multiple people, multiple people have dropped the ball. They left me holding the bag, and I'm not going to let that happen again. I'll make sure that I get it done. Yep. Um, there are some people that are just control freaks, yeah. right? And they just want to do everything because they want it to be done just right. Some people are perfectionists, um, and they want things to be just right. And they, the idea of somebody else doing something and it, perhaps it's not done exactly like I want it done scares them. The yeah. challenge with that is that 
your capacity is going to be limited. And, limited and, 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 and. Um, here's one of the, the greatest things that you can do for your pastor, Kidman leaders. What your pastor needs of you um, is your pastor doesn't need you to be busy doing, doing 10,000 things. He needs you to, first of all, help him do what, this, what the Apostle Paul said, and that was to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. So that's a big win. Your yeah. pastor, huge win. Pastor, look at these people that are doing these things that I could be doing, which then gives you a second win with your pastor. Now, all of a sudden, I have time to help dream with my pastor, to help solve my pastor's problems, to, yes. to take on some additional responsibilities. Um, I've got a little margin in my life. Um, and boy, when you show up at the table, Jason, as a staff person, you've been on staff at a church. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. been on staff at a church. When you show up and you can, because you're not so frazzled and you, you don't, you know, we get so frazzled because we got a million things on our brain that we yes. shouldn't be doing and thinking of. We're not, when we are at, at, yeah, When we are actually able to show up, be present, contribute to a conversation, have capacity, have a little margin in my life to help my pastor with something yes. or to help the youth pastor with something. All of a sudden, I was already a part of the team. Now I become even a more valuable part of the team. Exactly. Um, but I can't refuse to do everything. What's you, that? You serve your way to having a voice at the table. You know, I mean, I tell well, you, you do all the time. Like, like nailed you, it. You will yeah. serve. If you will serve your pastor, you're not there just to lead the kids. If you will yeah. serve your pastor, he that it will be there will be a, ta- a spot at the table for you. There and will always be a way. always be a spot. You yeah. exact you're exactly right. But not you got to be present, me. right? Yep. Totally, one hundred. Totally. So, Jason, thanks for having me on. It's been a fun. Con- it's always fun to talk to you. It is, um, and thank you so much. What What do you think is one trend we're going to see in 2023 in kids ministry? 2023. Oh boy, that's a good. I know question. that's a little curveball, but I'm curious. It is a little curveball, you know. Um, what you think is going to be kind of something we see happening in children's ministries across the nation this year? I don't know. I'm really intrigued by. Um, now I gotta hold on. I gotta look it up. Okay. Um, have you heard of this? Okay, you need to you need to kill the time here with me for about thirty seconds. Okay, here it is. Okay. I don't know if this is a training kids ministry, but I'm really intrigued by it. Have you heard of this chat GPT? No, Jason? I haven't. No, I, I hadn't either until like two days ago. Okay. So it's this, if I understand it right, this like our Chinese artificial intelligence where oh. it's chat, all one word. And then G like Gary, P like Paul, T like Tom. Okay. Where it will, I've not used it yet, but I had a guy in my office yesterday that's used it and his kids are using it. And I guess it's all new. Like, I don't know if it's new, new within like weeks, I think, or maybe months at the most, but it's this artificial intelligence that will literally type out answers for you. Or you could say to this thing, you could say, write an article about ducks in the North Pole that are helping the elves get ready for Christmas. And it needs to be, you know, a a 800 word article and make sure it ends on a climax. Wow. And boom. It spits out an article. Seriously. Cra- seriously. They actually, it's gotta be old, a little older in a couple of weeks. Cause he was telling me about these college professors that now there's, they're dealing with these college students that are saying, write me a 2000 word essay wow. on a, B, C, D, E and F and boom, it spits it out. And these, College professors are putting it into their software that checks to see if it's been plagiarized and it's wow. not showing up as plagiarized. <laughs> wow, that is crazy. It is. I've not used it, but this buddy of mine said he's been using it like his kids are having fun with it. So it can be as simple as like, hey, what's the answer to this? Yeah. Or or write a paragraph about this. He's saying like people could write books. It wow. I need a book, I need a chapter on this and make sure to cover boom, 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 boom. And he said it literally takes seconds and it spits it out. Technology is just like exploding. It's I mean, nuts. So yeah. So I'm thinking through my point is you asked me about a trend. I don't know if this yeah. can be a trend this year, but I wonder for Kidman leaders, if this technology really works, I haven't used it personally the way my friend says it works. And then when I Googled it last night, I mean, it's, it's legit. There were all yeah. these like NBC articles and 
news articles about it within the last several days, what you need wow. to know about it. So on. communicate like, with our children's ministry family. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Like, how could this impact the way we write curriculum or type newsletters or communicate with our parents wow. or create, create resources? I don't know. It's intriguing. It's interesting. You know, I mean, and you'll keep us up to date on Kids Matter. So, you know, thank you for all you do uh, to yeah. just enrich and what you've done for, man, has it been 20 years since you started the magazine? I, it has back when I was 12 years old. Can you yeah. believe that? <laughs> yeah, had, Jason, you have a good memory. You have a good memory. The magazine is 18 years old. Okay. I was thinking, um, yeah, I think eight, it's 18. So. And it was right about that time that you and I first connected, wasn't it? Exactly. Yep. That's when we, I think it was right in that time period that, we passed out the magazine at our conference and yeah, awesome. So thanks for just holding in there. Will you pray for no, leaders today? I would love to. Thank okay. you, Jason. We, Lord, we, we thank you for each one that's listening to this podcast or watching. Thank you for Jason. Thank you for the 1230 media team. Um, I pray for a wonderful 2023 for each yes, of God. these leaders. Lord, would you do what only you can do? Would you open doors that no man can open? Lord, would you give us vision that we and, and wisdom and discernment and ideas that are just supernatural? Lord, I pray for an amazing year. Encourage these leaders. We love them. Help them to remember that what they do matters. I pray they wouldn't lose heart. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you're not connected with Kids Matter, go check it out. Kids Matter. What's the website again, Ryan? Yeah, you got it. Kidsmatter.com. Just put a Z in there. Um, and then I love yeah, Kidman yeah. on Facebook, which is an incredible Facebook program, our Facebook totally. group that you need to get plugged into. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much. And we will catch you again. I'm sure in the middle of the year, I'd like to do a little follow-up. We'd love it. Thanks yeah. so much, Jason. Thank you for all you do. God bless you. You Merry too. Christmas. Uh, happy New Year too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks. We would love to hear from you. What are some of the thoughts, questions, ideas you would like to hear more about? You can submit your thoughts and questions to thekidmantribe.com slash mailbag. And be sure to share this podcast with everyone you know. Hey, everyone. What an incredible podcast with Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Five ways to win in 2023. Let that get down in your spirit. Think about that. Let it regurgitate. Be just praying about, God, what do you want me to focus on this year? That's really so important when we kick off the next this brand new year is, God, what do you have for me? What do I need to focus on? What do I need to put my time and effort in? And I promise you, he's going to bless those efforts. Hey, this year on the Kidman Tribe Podcast, we're going to have some incredible guests. You're not going to want to miss it. To make sure you don't miss it on whatever channel or, uh, or stream that you're watching this on, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Give us a good comment. Help us get up in the ratings. We'd love that. We'd be so appreciative as we're on this mission to help kids ministry leaders, volunteer leaders, people in kids ministry make their experiences better. Man, we can only broaden that out if you'll help us to share it. You can also share it on your social media. Take this podcast, share it with everyone you know. Our goal is to be a blessing and to help children's leaders across the country do their experiences better and really around the world. And also, you can find us on online at thekidmantribe.com. That's kidmantribe.com. If you go there, there's all kinds of resources. You have our swag there. You can get it for your leaders just to hand it out, give it out, let them know you appreciate them. Um, you can also find our mailbag. I would love to hear from you, topics that we need to talk about, guests that we need to have on. Um, love to get an email from you. We'll respond back to that. Everything gets read. And I promise that will help us to really move in the direction that you need us to move in. Uh, and we'd be so appreciative of that. You can also find bi-weekly blogs. Uh, when, we're not, when we don't have a Kidman Tribe podcast, we have a new blog that comes out. And so that's every other week. Go check it out at kidmantribe.com. Love to hear from you. Share on the mailbag. Hey, so strategically in this first part of the year, I wanted to bring some of the most incredible vision casting leaders on the podcast. We have Ryan. And then in two weeks, we have Esther Marina, which with Esther, we're going to be talking about how we, how the, the, the trends that are happening what we're going to see in 2023 in kids ministry gets such a broad experience. I know it's going to encourage you. It's going to challenge you. I can't wait for you to uh, to really dig in and and hear what Esther has to say. I want 2023 to be your best year ever as a leader, and we're going to work hard to help strategically set that up so that you can get all that God has for you to be launched into this year. And so you're not going to want to miss that. Um, Esther's been a guest on the Kidman Tribe podcast before. I, I know you love her. She's dedicated her life to reaching and teaching the next generation of for kids 
kids for Christ and really helping leaders to do that better. She's been in children's ministry for over 15 years with experiences reaching various churches and denominations. She's one of the hosts of Children's Ministry Today on the Fishbowl Radio Network. In addition to the hosting the monthly live webinars that she does on social media, she also travels and leads training and virtual training for children's ministry teams across the country. Esther's a gifted speaker, teacher, and author. She holds a master's in Christian education from Ashland Theological Seminary. You're not gonna wanna miss this, I promise you. Esther currently lives in Huntsville, Alabama with her husband, Guy Londo, and their two beautiful children, Grace and Gideon. I love those names. You're not going to want to miss this interview. You'll love Esther and her heart to reach leaders and raise up the next generation and launch us in to 2023. Thank you so much for joining us on the Kidman Tribe Podcast. Again, I challenge you. God, what do you have for me this year? Fresh, new. What's the new mercies that you want to pour into my life? I just hear that over and over again, that God is a God who gives us fresh new mercies every morning. Put the past away and only move forward. Make sure your windshield is bigger than your rear view mirror as a leader. You're gonna see incredible things this year. And I can't wait to partner with you here on the on the Kidman Tribe podcast. It's gonna be incredible. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. A single moment of it this year. Can't wait to see what God is gonna do. You are loved and you're appreciated. What you do changes lives for eternity. I am your biggest fan. I'm cheering you on always. You're my heroes. Go get them, tribe. We'll see you on the next time here at the Kidman Tribe Podcast. Have an incredible, incredible next couple of weeks. Thanks. God bless you. The Kidman Tribe Podcast is a production of 1230 Kids. For show notes, archive episodes, and more free resources for your kids' ministry, visit kidmantribe.com.